Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com here in City of Ash 2 with my friend Bastion. What I got for you today is I'm going to go through here on Veteran City of Ash 2. I'm going to solo it with Bastion and give you some helpful tips on how to do dungeons in the Elder Scrolls Online. You're going to want to watch this video if you're a beginner or new player and wanting to know some simple tips and tricks that can help you survive, do damage, and overall complete these dungeons pretty easily. Elder Scrolls Online is just about mechanics, timing, and spending a lot of time in your keyboard or controller, which I have. So let me share with you what I've learned. For this video, I have a ton of champion points. I have very good gear solo. This is my Magic Nightblade, one of the best solo classes. Link in the description below. I have Bastion maxed out at level 20 and pretty decent gear. So we're going to have him tank. He might die the whole time. But just keep in mind, you might not to be to this level and that's okay, but I'm going to still explain everything as you were just a brand new beginning player, okay? So step in tip number one, we're going to start this poll here as Bastion tanks. And general um, knowledge that might not be so general is typically as a new player, you want to save your ultimate for the boss encounters, right? So killing a boss really quickly is all about just nuking down the house doing a gazillion damage right away elder scrolls online really is different than other mmos in that it rewards pretty much just high damage there's very few fights where you have to be very tanky when you're learning what i'd recommend doing is going in tanky meaning having self heals self-sustain even if you're a damage dealer, do not be fully dependent on your tank and healer to protect you because you will be dead a lot of the time. So magic, how I do this is I use harness magic. It's a, a skill in the light armor. You have to have at least five. And that's going to make me very, very tanky just to shield up instinctively or react actively when I'm taking pressure. Um, as stamina, you can do echoing or resolving vigor. You can also use two-hander and use the brawler skill, morph of cleave. That's very, very good for stam builds, beginners. But I can't stress this enough. Do not be fully dependent on a healer or a tank to get you alive. Later on, when you're more advanced and you have a coordinated group and so forth, absolutely you can spare a little bit of survivability for all-out damage. When you're starting out, not so much. So you can see here what I'm doing is as soon as I take pressure, I put my shield up, harness magic. That's going to get me through a lot. And Bastion's tank in one. And also your class really determines a lot about how tanky you are. So magic is pretty, generally speaking, a lot easier than stamina. One, because you're typically at a range. Elder Scrolls Online and the dungeons and the mechanics in here really favor range, especially at endgame and the harder the content you can get a hold of. So... You might want to think about that if you really struggle. Yes, melee is fantastic, but I'm telling you, it's a lot easier at range. Same with Magic Sork, Magic Nightblade. Some of these classes have something in their kit, like a main spamble swallow soul that I'm using, that heals you. Same with Templar Puncturing Sweeps. Your main spamble heals you. Very, very forgiving for a new player because you can have a shield and a main spamble that heals you and be very, very survival. Stam Sork has Crit Surge, which is kind of the equivalent for Stam builds. And you can do bloodthirst from the dual wield. But in general, if you're looking for like, I want to start this game over and have a really hard carry class, I would definitely recommend magic. So I can take a bunch of damage here. I'm going to put a shield in the back bar. And when you're doing these trash pulls, um, you want large scale AOE damage. So unstable wall, racer cow traps if you're stam. Large scale AOE damage. And then that's going to kind of do the work for you. So you're just going to put those down and then go to your front for your main spammable and your rotation. So it's very, very simple. When you're starting out, you might look at other people's builds or mine, and it's quite complex with a series of buffs and debuffs, and it, if it overwhelms you, start from the basics. So what I'd recommend doing is starting with one or two damage over time effects, trying to maintain as much uptime as you can on them until you've mastered it. Once you've mastered one, two um, AOE ground effects and uh, dots, then move on to three and four. So you see my back bar here, I got um, Twisting Path, that's one. And then I got uh, Unstable Blockade, and I'll blow up, that's two. So I can really just maintain those two, go to my front bar and have a main spammable and be just fine. Another thing you can do if you're a new player and you struggle, and I constantly tell people this, is whether you have a shield or a self-heal, 
double bar it in the same key. That seems kind of counterintuitive, but you're gonna double bar it in the same key. Reason you do that is a lot of people get flustered when they're taking a lot of damage, especially in PvE or PvP. And that's okay, if you're that player, just realize if you put your defensive skill in the same key on the back bar, it'll be much, much easier because you won't be like, uh, 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 what do I click, what do I click? Trust me, everyone goes through that. Everyone gets the panic click or the clickies or whatever you want to call it. You're not alone in that, but put it in the same ability. So you see I have Harness Magic on my back bar and the three key. If I were new and not used to this, what I would do is put it on my front bar, drop Sap Essence. Yes, I would lose a little bit of damage, use a little bit of AOE, but it's much better than having a bar swap really fast at a high level if I couldn't do that. You will be able to do it later on. Trust me, you will be able to do it later on. Everyone works through these things. But at the beginning, double barring it's really good. And you can see I'm taking a ton of pressure and I'm just healing through it because I'm a Nightblade, right? And I'm gonna slap essence here. I'm gonna get this one down. I'm gonna work on the add here, kind of pull back. Now I have a Destra alt. This is huge AOE. So you can see, I'm gonna drop this, I'm gonna block. And then, of course, the ad moves. Of course it moves as soon as I drop it. It's gonna move over here. So, of course, my, my huge alt that I've been saving up for half an hour is gone now. But the point remains, take your time, get rid of these trash mobs down. Okay, so now we got these down. I'm gonna go to my back bar and my uh, tank is dead. This will happen to you in PVE, no problem. This is why being self-reliant is really, really good. And you can see I'm doing a lot of mobility. The reason that's useful is you're gonna learn the mechanics at first, but you do not wanna be close to a melee mob. See, block that. And then a lot of this is memorization, so I've been down here for so much. So it's gonna keep on coming back and I'm kind of kiting back and forth and people are like, why do you move so much? The reason I do is you wanna avoid the AOE cleave damage. So I'm gonna drop the house here. So he shoots the shot there, I'm at 31%. When I say AOE cleave damage, if you don't know what that means is, Typical mobs and MMOs do something in front of you and like a conal. That can be avoided a lot of times by positioning. A lot of times new tanks don't know this and they point the boss towards you. Come here, Bastion, get up. They point the boss towards you. Your job, DPS and or healer or whatever you are, you position the boss or the most dangerous of mobs pointing away from the group. Common sense stuff here, but it's very rarely done. You as a DPS or a healer get behind it. Again, common things, you're like Delta, we know this. Some of y'all don't practice it though. And the healer should be even further behind the DPS if possible because you can do combat prayer given a very important damage buff. So positioning will become natural after a while, but you have to be cognizant of it. So let's let's try to practice this in reality. This is kind of a hard pull, I think. So we got dogs here. See like this? See how Bastion's running up? So I don't want to be right in front of Bastion. I want to be behind him. I'm getting nuked down here by a thousand mobs. I'm gonna put my shield up, no problem. See, I'm behind him right here. This is also very effective in endgame because there's a passive called Backstabber and Champion Points. That's gonna amplify your damage significantly. So even if you don't have that, if you're not used to it, it's gonna reward you for playing that play style. And you can see ground effects go down, no problem. I'm gonna go my back bar. And if you're playing Magic, typically what I do is I play um, a double Fire Staff because it's pretty much the best damage you can do. But if you're a new player, consider picking up a Lightning Staff back bar. Reason is, it's much, much easier to sustain. So you can go to your back bar, rip off a fully charged heavy attack. With the Fire Staff, I have to go one, two, three, bang. With the Lightning Staff, it kind of like auto targets, right? So it's so much easier to sustain when you're low on gas. Basically, every second in the game, you should be doing something. And if you don't know what the heck else to do, you should be heavy attacking. It rewards you for resource sustain. It does a ton of damage. If you don't know what else to do, you're panicking, you have full health, whatever, just put rip down a fully charged heavy attack. It's gonna give you resource sustain, it's gonna do damage. If you have a lightning staff, it's gonna do a little bit of splash damage as well. So you can't beat it. All right, so this is gonna be another little boss fight here coming up. Bastion's getting nuked, dunked on, got you down. So we're gonna clear out the trash mobs. Another thing to do when you're learning these fights, is saving your ultimate, like I've already said, for the boss round specifically. It'll make it just go so much faster and easier. 
um, and you'll know specific bosses which part, which phase of the fight to actually drop the house and or hit a warhorn if you're a healer or a tank. Um, do the Destro alt or the bow alt or dawn breaker or whatever you are if you're Stan. You'll know. By starting out in general, you see that big bar in the middle of your top, in the middle of your screen, that's when you know it's about to go down. So try to save um, an alt high cost if you can. Another thing you can do is Bastion's taking this mod. If you see that, tanks out there, you can't taunt everything straight away. Your goal is to taunt the most dangerous target straight away. Your, your DPS and or healer might have to deal with some pressure until you can get them all. So identify the most, you know, hard hitting mob you can straight away and taunt it. So we got this one here. This one is kind of like a DPS check that if you uh, don't do damage fast enough, the mobs will kind of port back in. So what we're going to need to do is kind of just do a lot of AOE cleave damage and hopefully Bastion can take it. I can get behind it. So you see here, I'm going to do some sap essences. This one's going to go away. So I'm trying to point my ground effect AOEs so it splashes everything. That You're probably like Delta. That's the, the simplest um, advice you can give. But you'd be how, for surprised how often people actually don't do that. So one, two. I didn't do it there, right? So I have two dots ticking now i have three as they come together so now we're going to put up all of our ground effects and these mobs here if you don't kill them in time what will happen is they'll give the boss hp and you're kind of just sitting here for about a half an hour so we're going to drop the house here again put that back shoot my shot and just maintain your buffs and fully charge heavy attack when you're out of gas so we're going to get the more adds up here fully charge heavy attack okay go to my back bar fully charge heavy attack and then you'll be able to get some uh, champion points and some other things that will have uh, a damaging or excuse me resource increase when things die so that's really really useful so you don't have to worry about it all the time bastion's down not going well so far got it down boom here we go 51 percent, and i got no tank so i'm gonna have to use all the tricks in my tool belt i gotta drain up so i'm gonna use a bunch of sap essence try to delete a couple of these mobs if i can one might not be able to get this one two got it down okay so it's slow and steady here there's no timing mechanic but myself so i'm gonna kind of rotate around getting out of the red red is bad or pink you'll notice that it's pink on my screen people are like how do you do that it's in the gameplay settings you can actually change it this is quite useful if you don't know that because the default setting can actually be a bit troublesome to to notice and do so if you are that person that may be colorblind or you have trouble seeing that stuff watch out put it down change it in the gameplay settings okay so i got a destro alt here i need it because these mobs are stacking up on me there we go sap essence big deeps i'm using false gods which is a set you can use withered hand when mobs die it's going to give you resources back it's super super effective when you're playing solo or you don't have a whole lot of champion points i have a separate video on that i probably should link that in the description but it's a good video if you don't know what sets to get a hold of um so then we got 19 percent health here so i'm just going to execute um executes so you're going to be aware of your class specific if they have an execute and it replaces your main spammable at a certain hp threshold by reading it typically it's 25 percent templars is a little bit higher and then night blades right around 25 percent sorks is a little bit lower at 20 percent so what you're still going to do is light attack weave in between I have a separate video on that but you're going to maintain um your light attack weave with your execute and it replaces your main spamble so instead of swallow soul what i'm doing is replacing that all right so we're going to go up here this one's real nasty this uh pull up here so i'm gonna save it if i can and a poor bastion bastion b there we go so i'm gonna get them down and you can use the mechanics of the companion and they are somewhat helpful especially if you're a new player and you struggle um they can get you by some dungeons and some grinding as well i mean i can solo this myself but hopefully we don't get a no death so yeah, consider getting a companion in Blackwood if you struggle with this sort of stuff. And then like if someone leaves your group in a dungeon, it can be quite helpful. So these things essentially continue to respawn down the stairs. But we're going to take our time and see if we can just get a bunch of them down. So I'm going to drop the house here so I don't get overwhelmed. Put that down and I'm going to shield preemptively. Now I'm going to go to my back, my front bar, excuse me, and use my AOE here and try to kind of just be mobile. 
get out of the way, do a dodge. And um, you magic users out there and or stamina users, don't be afraid to dodge, especially if you have a lot of resources. So dodging is a great way to basically, if you have topped off on gas, to avoid a lot of attacks without taking a lot of time. Also block casting, that's what I'm doing right there. So what that essentially means is I'm holding block, but I'm still pressing my button, the three key. So I'm a cognizant of my stamina and the number I wanna maintain is about 3000. If I have 3000, I can dodge roll and I can CC break. When I'm below um, 3000 or getting close to, I no longer block, I know. I can no longer block or I'm dead, right? So I can block here, see it draining down as I block cast a little bit. So yeah, that's kind of what you're thinking about and looking at is what makes the decision on what the next action is, is depending on my resource pool. So we got these down. All right, so this is gonna be real tough. We're gonna drop the house here, hammer time. One, two, I don't know, Bastion's AFK, looking at Instagram, Bastion, what you doing? Get off your Twitter, Bastion. All right, so we get them down, and these other ones will keep on coming. So I'm gonna CC break here. There he is. And it's gonna hold resources. So you're probably like, well, yeah, great. If you can't block and you're taking a lot of pressure, what do you do? So what do you do is just spam your shield or spam a heal if you can. That's all you gotta do. Okay, so we got this down. We're gonna kill out this trash mob here. Now I got a bunch of resources. We're gonna push up here, and this one will kind of one-shot you, so you have to be pretty careful. So we got a bunch of ads coming. We're gonna try to get these down. So blocking, I'm at 11K stamina. I'm gonna reapply my buffs. I'm gonna dodge here out of that. Yep. And I got a Destro ult, so I'm taking a lot of pressure. I'm gonna drop a Destro ult here. I have better than dying. Okay, and then I can see my potion. I use my potion on cooldown. That's gonna give me a couple of resource buffs. And pull back here, shoot my shot. There we go. So now we're gonna let Bastion taunt this guy. I'm holding the Y key on PC. Oh, uh, Bastion taunt him. I'm holding the Y key and it's your pet command. So if you're taking a lot of pressure and you don't wanna fuss with it, let Bastion do the work. So, and the Sap Essence, you can't see his health bar necessarily over his head, which I need to change that, but the Sap Essence will help heal him a bit. You see us healing him a little bit. Bastion, you're running, brah. There we go, damage reduction down. So I'm gonna keep on sapping so he doesn't die. Shoot my shot, I'm getting close to Exy here, and Bastion got nuked. So now we're gonna just kind of line of sight, doing the best we can to maintain our distance. We're in execute, so I'm looking at the top bar there. You see how it hit me that hard? I go to my back bar, no problem. I'm gonna tab target. That's another way you can kind of prioritize the target. It'll help you actually hit the right thing. I think on consoles, it's um, it, like pressing your thumbstick down. I could be wrong on that. But that will help you actually target the right thing because you don't need to really kill the skeletons. We need to kill the boss to push this over. So now we got it down. We're gonna do the Krem Guard and we're gonna start off the same way. Let the, t let the tank go first. And then we're just gonna AOE it down and do the best we can. It's only 2.5 million health roughly. That's not too bad. So some of the Vatishram bosses have that solo. So it might be a little bit painful starting, but let's see if we can do it. So Bastion's maintaining aggro pretty good. And this will have a lot of mobs. You can do one of two things. If you're in a group, you can just straight up burn it. When we say burn it, that's basically ignoring the mechanics if you can, and just straight up doing as much damage as you can. So Bastion comes up here, trying to off heal him. He would just squish here in a pickle right now. There we go, got him, he rolls back. Of course, out of my AOE. So we're at 72%, so not too bad yet. Now this is where it gets nasty with all the mobs. I'm gonna drop a Destro here on the melee mobs and a little bit of the Archer ones and see if I can get him down. Got him down, shoot my shot here, and they'll just keep on respawning, basically. So we're just gonna kind of maintain our discipline, rotate around, we are using range. The stun is what's gonna kill me if I don't prevent the stun, okay? So we're gonna go do as much damage to as many targets as we can. So the melee is quite easy to kill, right? Because it's gonna run towards you. So I'm gonna just not even really mess with the melee, I'm gonna stack them on top of the boss here. I'm gonna put my ground effects down, I'm gonna sap. As many targets as I can sap at once, the more damage I can do. And then I'm kind of rotate around and just find the range. So range here, yep. Park, one, two, three, buff. I'm gonna put a shield up just in case. I'm taking a lot of pressure, no problem. I'm gonna block that, block cast that, there we go. 
I'm gonna dodge roll back here. Big fire breath, fire is not good, allegedly, 40%. Now we're not doing really much damage to the boss, so we gotta drop a Desti here. Boom, big Desto. Big Desto, there we go, get behind it. Rotate around, keep my mobility up. And so we're close to a burn. We're like at 800,000 health. So I'm kind of running the numbers of how much damage I can do and how many adds I could probably realistically ignore. So I'm gonna do a dodge here. We're at 34. I'm gonna get this up, just kind of rotate around, see? So it seems scary at first, but it's just really mechanics. And that's the AOE, AOE cleave I was talking to y'all about. So that's why you kind of rotate around. Now we're getting real close, block. So we're gonna line of sight this, kind of rotate around. We're getting close to execute and I'm close to a destruction staff alt. So when we reach that level, then we can basically drop the house on top of it and see if we can burn it. Okay, so we're gonna reapply our buffs just in case. So I'm gonna put drain on it, get my resource sustain, refreshing. I'm gonna drop a Desto. I'm gonna go back to my front bar. Now it's an execute, so I'm gonna go back to impale. Keep up Swallow Souls if I can. For the heal, pull back and back. We got her down, Bastion, come on, man. So yeah, that was kind of the, the good analogy for the cleave damage and making sure you're not eating it. Because you notice when I rotated, what happened? Well, as soon as I rotated, the thing basically was not hitting me, right? It's parked and stopped and shot in front. Great, Delta, useful tip. No, what I'm saying is a lot of the PvE mechanics won't actually rotate around. It's triggered at certain time intervals. So if you're behind it at that time or you keep on moving to the flank, you can avoid a lot of damage. That's useful as a tank, that's useful as a healer, that's useful as a DPS. You need to know these things. Uh, a lot of times I find people want to be DPS because they don't want to know the mechanics. You know, no one wants to play tank in Elder Scrolls Online. I don't get it, but you got to know the mechanics when you're a tank. You can't fake it, so... Don't be a fake tank out there. No one likes the, that person. All right. So another thing you want to do while I'm yapping and killing trash mobs is apply your damage over time buffs and or debuffs, regardless of what role you are, from longest to shortest, okay? Why that's useful is um, you want to get the most time out of them. Plus, it'll kind of sync up when you come back and cast them. If you don't know, Elder Scrolls Online has a global cooldown system, meaning when I have cast an ability or press the four key on Swallow Soul, I have a second before I can use something else. The second global cooldown. So if you don't know that, that's why you can't just like spam five buttons at a time. So you're kind of weighing out the options of what you can cast and what's the most advantageous action you can take per second right so main spammable why would i use that over a damage over time effect well because if i let refreshing path or twisting path run its entire duration it's probably going to do more damage over its entire duration than my main spammable so you're going to go longest to shortest and then when that's done that's when you go and do your main spammable weave well i attack weaving takes some practice i'm not the master at it yet either but just consider it will be one of your top damage sources, if not the top. So I'm gonna go here. You see how Swallow Soul just kept me up so fast, so much, because the heal is just so powerful on it. So as soon as my health dipped really, really low, boom, just popped me up, no problem. Let me check my gear. What? Oh, I'm using the Pale Order. So Pale Order is really, really good. Um, Death Dealer's Fate is also fantastic. Those are two mythic options you can use. So if you're doing something solo that's, you know, pretty hard to do that folks do with a group, those are two items that you can use mythic-wise that will really, really help you out. Um, and Death Dealer is going to give you a lot of max stats. It's quite useful if you're running in a group and you don't necessarily need the healing, but you just want the max stats. More max stats equals more max damage and health uh, and healing, excuse me. So knowing how your class scales is also very important. So when you read a tooltip on an ability, you want to know how to actually make it hit harder or do more healing or whatever. It should tell you how it scales. And like healers, typically, some of the abilities and gear sets favor more max stats, where PvP, some of the abilities and skills favor more weapon and spell damage. So knowing that is going to be kind of why you go with various loadouts, skill, and gear to amplify your main spamble, your damage over time, and so on. If no one's ever told you that, that's why that's the way it is. 
All right, we got a huge trash pull here. I'm not going to mess with it. Destro alt, shield, bar swap, boom. I'm getting stunned. No problem. I'm not going to... I Now I can break free. I'm at 4,000. I see a heavy attack coming. I'm going to dodge. I'm completely out of gas here on Stam, so I'm just going to... Can't be blocking. All right, there we go. Got you down. Oh. Got you down. So we're going to execute here. There we go. And we're close to an alt already, which is one of the strengths of Magic Nightblade. It's just disgusting alt gen. Now, this one is tough. I've done this before um, solo and played melee on my Nightblade, and it's, it's quite difficult, but it's the same thing. So we're not going to have a whole lot of ads to kill. While you, why you need to know that is because we're sustaining through killing ads, additional mobs. So sustain might be a trick, and that's what we're going to have to focus on in this one. See how that cleave is? Bastion got nuked. So as a DPS, you want to maintain right behind it. I know I keep drilling that in, but people act like they know that, but they really don't. And it will amp your damage, and it will help your team, and it will avoid a lot of crap. And Bastion's already dead. Boy, real helpful this round. So this here, I know that my healing through Pale Order and um, Swallow Souls is probably enough to get me through this. So I'm just kind of kind of... I'm taking advantage of the 28 meters best I can. You can see I've already followed off my advice. Here we go. One, two, three, Desto. I'm going to put my shade back up. Try not to get in crap. Of course, I did. So we're at 70%. Looking good. Pull him back. I'm going to fully charge here. Fully charge. Just do another fully charge. Why not? Siphon's about up. And boom. Put that back up. Kind of come, come in close here and then pull back. So I'm going to maintain those buffs, get Swallow up. Now I'm going to rotate around. Now this guy here is just spinning and coming at me. It's not going to really be that much of a threat if I can just maintain my distance. So I can just kind of kite around, take deep breath, no big deal. I'm going to shield just in case. I'm going to put Drain up. Now it's getting close to me. So I'm going to do a dodge because I got plenty of stam. And now it's just kind of chopping me down. No problem. Do a dodge again. You can kill it if you like, but it's about 700,000 health. So we're not going to mess with it. So now we're at 42% health, get stunned, we're going to roll out, we're going to come in close here, and I ate it there, no problem, and I'm going to put my two ground effects down, I'm going to peel back as fast as I can go. So once we get to execute, our damage should ramp up significantly, but I need a lot of gas for this, so siphon, drain, fully charge, fully charge, I'm going to shield preemptively, I'm going to come in close through a dodge, put my ground effects down. I'm going to rotate. We're at 31%. So I'm looking at that. I'm looking at my potion. And I'm looking at my ultimate. So elemental drains coming off cooldown. No problem. So we're going to grab that. I'm at full stam. These things are getting close. I'm going to dodge. I'm going to cast an ability. Rotate back. And then now we're going to maintain our swallow soul. So it's still healing us. And we're going to come in close for impales if we can. There we go. One, two, three, 43k. Good. Boom, boom, come on, big deeps, big deeps, whole block, didn't work. Potion, get Swallow Soul, I'm going to put a shield up just in case, and boom, we got her down. Big help there, Bastion. Ooh, Companion Mace, nice. Um, Come on, Bastion, you had a rough go today. Boy, howdy, you out of food, brother? Anyways, so keep on going. A lot of times in PvE, uh, people that do solo PvE or just PvE content, I find that they struggle with taking pressure. Now, this is a generalization that doesn't apply to everybody, but it, it, they find they struggle with taking pressure. So if everything is going great and the tank's 100% doing their job and the healer is just bursting them up to full, life's good. They can just kind of go through the day. Here's the dungeon, no problem. It's when things get chaotic, unexpected, and you're taking pressure that separates you as a DPS. Anyone can nuke the parse dummy, and that's a, a mini game in and of itself. But can you do it when there's crap everywhere on the ground? You're getting nuked, stunned, snared, immobilized, uppercutted, so on. So if you're that person that struggles with that, seriously consider doing PvP. People are like, oh my God, it's terrible. But yes, you're going to be forced to be uncomfortable and you're going to have no way around it. That will actually make you a fantastic pve -er. Because if you can get four people using Dawnbreakers on you, you know, smashing you, stunning you, doing this and that, this, this PvE stuff will feel like nothing. Trust me. So it'll actually make you better. And same thing goes with PvPers. We could also learn 
to do light attack weaves and buffs and debuffs rotations a lot smoother. So you have both to learn from both elements. Don't think that you know it all and that it's going to, uh, you, you can avoid that. There's no benefit to doing it. There's truly a benefit, especially with PVP, because I'm telling you, being independent of a healer will make you a very strong player or being independent of a tank. Same thing goes while we're killing this stuff. If you are a tank, I like playing every single role in these dungeons and Elder Scrolls Online because it's kind of like being a quarterback in football. If I know as a quarterback what the play is called, I should know what the tank's supposed to do, what the healer's supposed to do, what the DPS is supposed to do. So if I know all this stuff, then it makes it much more likely that we can be in the right position. I can help other people out. Because when you're a tank, you should know what the healer should be running. And when you're a DPS, you should know where the tank should be parking the mobs. Believe it or not, all of those things will help. Same thing while we're killing this trash goes for if you're the, um, oh, if you're uh, playing other classes is beneficial. Playing other classes is super beneficial because what happens is you learn about the buffs and debuffs. That's typically why folks bring in certain classes or certain classes are outperforming or uh, underperforming it's because of the buffs and debuffs they bring to the group so if you play and know all the classes you can know kind of what's going on in the group composition wise what to expect major and minor buffs so there is some value in that now we're about to do a 45 minute fight here so i'm probably going to just go in here we have to kill both of these things, and then we're getting to the final boss. So I'm probably going to skip ahead um, and just make sure that we get this done because it's going to be 15 minutes of fighting these mobs. So let me go ahead and kill this, skip ahead to the final boss, and we'll get after it. All right, 20 minutes later, we got both of those down, and we're to the final boss. So City of Ash 2. Um, I, I imagine this is on Veteran. Uh, I imagine Bastion's going to die pretty quick. So we're going to have to use all the tips that we have talked about or I have talked to you about surviving independent of a healer. We're going to have to watch the cleave. We're going to have to use our stamina resource pool. We're going to have to keep our buffs up. We're going to have to do all of these things in one to be able to beat this. This is 5.4 million health. It travels around the different portals. We're going to have ads. It's just going to be a lot to handle. So we're going to do our best and see if we can get this done. Uh, it's gonna be a challenge, but I think we can do it. So here we go. Fasty B, take off. Here we go. Three, two, one, here we go. So of course I don't have an ultimate, but let's go behind here. It, I missed it. Look at that, straight away. Great start. No oh, Bastion's hanging in there. Okay, so now the flame comes down. If you don't know this mechanic in City of Ash 2, you kind of peel to the end. I'm gonna hold block here. I'm gonna keep my resources thing going up. I don't have an ultimate, so we're low on damage. Very low on damage. So we're at 89%. Put refreshing up. CC break, so we're gonna have low stam the whole time because I have to block cast that. Now we're gonna get off this edge here, see where he goes. Potion up, and he goes clear over here, of course. Of course. All right, so now we need to get this down ASAP, right? So I'm gonna try to drop a Desto, and then I'm gonna try to hit both mobs if I can, all three of them with my Desto, along with Sap Essence. That's gonna get these down, and they're gonna resource sustain me through their death. There we go. Got them down, make sure that one goes down. Okay, now we're on the boss. Damage is still a bit low. Resource is a little bit better. So let's shoot our shot here. CC break, keep my shade up. We're at 75. Hearts are beaten. Okay, we're now gonna shoot my shot, whole block. Resource sustain, number one goal. So I'm gonna fully charge heavy attack. Just use uh, my buff on my back bar. I'm gonna dodge this, because I'm pretty good on stam. Another flame thing on the ground here. One, two, bar swap, hold the block. I'm gonna fully charge heavy this one. So I'm fully charge heavy, even peeling back. And let's see if we can make it. Which platform are we going? Which platform? Clear across the way. Of course it did. So I'm going to hit Twisting Path here to speed up a bit. We're going to do the same exact mechanic here. Drop the house. Try to hit both, all three mobs if we can. Maintain our buffs. Just got to get that shield down. Okay, got that one down. This one's not really aggroed to me, so I'm going to block. 
I'm gonna try to line up the twisting and the blockade so it reaches out and touches both of them. I'm gonna get right in between them, pull block, and sap, sap them both. So the goal here, math-wise, do as much damage to both of them as possible. Sounds simple, but your positioning can really determine if you do that or not, or if it's just talk. Okay, so we're at 55% health. I'm pretty good on alt. Doing okay on resource sustain. Block. Okay, I'm gonna fully charge heavy attack, just real quick. Fully charge, we need enough juice just in case we get in trouble and we have to shield. So, break free here. Get out of that. Keep my buffs up. My two resource sustain buffs went down, so let's get that back up. Fully charge heavy and just keep on rotating. Come to this one, please. Yes, came to this one, perfect. All right, so we're gonna drop the house here. I'm gonna try to walk back. So I can sap these ads and get them all at once. Yep, right there, perfect. So we've got that one down, good. Dodge this. So I'm gonna hit my refreshing. So make sure to hit both of them. I'm gonna stand right in between them again. Positioning, CC brick. I can see that mechanic before it happens because I've just played this so many times. I know exactly what it looks like. Memorization is a big deal in PVE. Just memorying the fights. One, two, I got about five seconds left on my resource sustain one, so I'm good there. Block this, we're at 29%, so let's go ahead and do a fully charged heavy attack or two. And good, make sure we're at full resources. I'm gonna shield just in case. Put that up, that, that. CC break, thanks for stunning me. We're at 23%, okay, and we'll look at the last platform, I think, here. Yes, last one. Have to go here, don't you? There we go, yep. I'm gonna potion, same thing, 22%. I'm gonna place it right there, look at this. So I'm gonna instill light attack weaving in between saps. So I can kill all three of them and get that boss's shield down in one. Okay, got it down, don't be celebrating yet. So we're gonna maintain our buffs, block. I'm just gonna pull them all up. I'm gonna put swallow souls up and I'm gonna switch to execute. I'm at uh, 13%. So I'm gonna put shade back up, CC break. I'm gonna put another swallow soul up just because I'm low. I don't want to get low on health. I'm going to do a soul harvest and light attack weave, swallow soul, and just maintain my buff. So swallow souls back up. I have enough gas to finish this. We got it done. So City of Ash veteran, um, solo with the companion. Boom, completed the dungeon. Let's see what fat loots we get. Loots, 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 loots. Oh, something I've already got. So we got an achievement there. What achievement did I get? Uh, oh, defeats something. Okay. So, yeah, we guess we completed all the, the dungeons and so, uh, the bosses and so forth. So, I didn't die there the whole time. But the reason I didn't is because Elder Scrolls Online, just like any video game, has rules and so forth. I hope you got something out of this video. A lot of the basic stuff applies regardless if you're at end game doing very hard trials or whatnot. Positioning, rotations, cooldowns. Focus, shielding, survival, big damage, alt burst, it all matters and putting it together in practice will really help you in these dungeons. Thanks for watching and shout out to my Patreons for sponsoring this video and if you'd like to be featured in future end credits, link in the description below.